I'm Jerry Lohr. I'm the guy that started J. Lohr Winery, and uh, now, um, 40 some years later, I'm the founder and the CFO. Well, as you can see, <laughs> it's uh, middle of January and it's about uh, 42 out, and uh, but this is pruning season, and so we're at the Hilltop Vineyard, about a mile as the crow flies northeast of the Passerobis Winery. We really start pruning sometime in the middle of November, it depends upon when we have freeze, if the vines have lost their leaves and so forth. And so now in the middle of January, uh, we're halfway through or two thirds of the way through uh, pruning. So pruning is selecting some strong canes that come out for next year. So here I have one here that's going in the right direction. We want to probably have two out on each wire. I've got a stronger cane over here, but this one looks as if it wants to go that way. So now we come back to renewal spurs in here. So there's a renewal spur there. That cane we've left. This cane, we're probably gonna take this off. So pruning is uh, the most time consuming per vine of all the processes we do, but it's exceedingly important because that's when we set the tone for that year's crop. Kristen Barnheisel, winemaker for White Wines here at J. Lower Winery. This morning we're here in our Block 9 here in the Arroyo Seco. It's May 8th and as we're getting through the growing season, just want to capture the birds and the sunshine and see what's going on here in the vineyard. As you can see, we're in full bloom just now. If you were here in the vineyard, you'd be able to smell the fantastic white floral aromas, a little bit of apple that you get with bloom as you walk through the vineyard. It's just a beautiful aromatic smell and this is just the start of the 2017 season. I love working with the Arroyo Seco fruit. I've worked with a lot of different wines throughout the state and a lot of different vineyards, and this place is truly unique. This is really the ideal place to grow California Chardonnay. This is our clone 809 here in the vineyards. It's a very particular clone that we love working with for October 9th. There's no other combination of the, the wind run that we have that extends our season and allows for that development of flavors and the greenfield potatoes that forces the roots to grow deep and really gives us that balance of the acidity and the texture. This results in a Chardonnay that is really overt and has beautiful floral characters and great depth. It gives us complexity and gives us a really nice long finish. I love the October night as a pure expression of this site and this area. Isn't it great to be out in the vineyard in the springtime? Here we are the first week of May. We're in the Shotwell Vineyard. I'm Steve Peck, the red winemaker at J. Lore Vineyards and Wines. At this point in this season here, the first week of May, we're seeing that grand growth of vines. You can almost hear them growing. I mean, it's just crazy. From one week to the next, you can see significant growth. And over the course of about four to six weeks, these vines are going to grow three foot in length. You don't want the fruit overly shaded by foliage because it won't develop enough color in the skins. Conversely, we don't want the fruit overexposed to where it's going to develop sunburn and, and drive tannins up too high in the fruit. Bud break occurs here somewhere between St. Patty's Day and April Fool's. But once that, that gets started, um, it's game on. These vines, they go through a little slow growth. Those first four inches seem to take a couple of weeks to happen, but then we get three feet growth within another the next four weeks. That gets us through about May 15th. At that time, there's actually tiny little flowers on every cluster, and, I, and ideally, if they pollinate properly, those tiny little uh, flowers will, will become berries. Hi, I'm Jeff Meyer, Director of Winemaking, President and COO of Jaylor Vineyards and Wines. We're out in the middle of our Fox Reach Vineyard here in uh, what we call GB9 in the Arroyo Seco Appalachian of Monterey County. 
over here in late July. We're just starting to see kind of a few berries that are starting veraison right now, so a little bit of color change. I'll grab one of these out here, but you can just see the purple, but pretty much everything else is green. Pinot is really kind of like making the Chardonnay of red wines, as it were. So a lot of it has to do in terms of the winemaking with texture. You want to do a gentle extraction. We don't want to make a wine that's super tannic when it comes to Pinot Noir. The goal is to really have this soft, velvety, voluptuous sort of mouthfeel, along with the really pretty aromatics that Pinot can bring. So it's what makes Pinot so interesting to work with is you have to really be very delicate in your handling of it. We do have a very extended growing season here. Chardonnays and the Pinots tend to be pretty lush and and weighty on the palate, and a lot of that has to do with that wind and its impact on the grapevine and how it grows here. We have a reasonable crop out here in 2017, so things are looking really good. We're really excited. You know, as a variety, we at JLO are really love. I'm Steve Carter, and I'm the regional vineyard manager for Gaylord Vineyards here in Paso Robles. It's midsummer right now, and we're just expectant for Verasion. Verasion is the period where grapes change color from hard green berries to, in this case, with Petit Syrah, to soft purple berries. We've grown Petit Syrah here in Paso Robles for about 20 years. We're up to 75 acres total, but we specifically work with about 20 acres produce the wines that go into our Vineyard Series wine tower. We've able to identify specific areas of the vineyard and specific varieties that do well in the spot that we have them. And this gives us a chance for the crew to try to produce something extra special and gives them a focus where they can really focus on quality production. Petit Sarat does particularly well here in Paso Robles. We have a very warm climate. We finally had uh, a wonderful rainfall season, which has allowed us to grow the grapes to this stage with almost no irrigation. We're looking at a season where we haven't had to, to thin the fruit nearly as much as we would normally do. So we're, we're quite optimistic for this year and the production that we have right now. CEO of J. Laura Vineyards and Wines. We're here now, October 19th. We are looking at Cabernet Sauvignon here at our Shotwell Vineyard. Harvest is all about taking what's been happening during the majority of the year and seeing how all that has come to bear. You know, what kind of spring we had, what the set was like due to whether it was cool or warm. Uh, what was Parisian like? You know, was it pretty uniform or was it really scattered? One of the nice things here about Paso Robles is that we have so many different locations, different soil types, different climates. It really allows us to dial in picking when we want to. It's very aptly named because we are literally at the top of the hill here. What's nice about Hilltop is that it has really nice black cherry, dark berry uh, flavors, even a little blue fruit occasionally, but soft to medium tannin profiles, which is a real characteristic of Paso Robles Cabernet. Very food friendly. What's nice is that it's approachable in its youth, but still there's enough tannin there to gracefully age for many years. advocate with JLOR. It's October 19th. We're right here in the heart of harvest, in the heart of Arroyo Seco, with the uh, afternoon winds coming in at about 2 o'clock. And the beauty of these afternoon winds is that they essentially uh, shut down photosynthesis in the grapes, and the grapes actually have a much longer hang time as a result. But this wind is pretty uh, resplendent throughout uh, the valley here. 
We hand harvest at night uh, in the cool of the evening to preserve the natural fruit flavors and that fresh acidity. Harvest for, for me, and I know for the rest of my family, just is a time of incredible bounty. We always look forward to what nature has prepared us to gather throughout the year. And we know that it's a time where our devoted vineyard workers and cellar masters, everyone's coming together to just bring the most beautiful fruit that we can possibly bring in to contribute to our wines. The Vineyard Series to us truly represents the best grapes from the finest vineyard parcels and expressive of the varieties that we choose to grow in our chosen appellations. My name is Brendan Wood. I'm the assistant winemaker here at J. Lore Vineyards and Wines, and I've been with the company since 2004. So today we're in the barrel room here at uh, J. Lore Winery, Paso Robles. It's right about middle of January. January is a really exciting time to be making wine. Just right now, we have our Carroll's Vineyard the barrels right behind us. Carroll's Vineyard Cabernet has been in barrel for about 16 months. It's gone through most of its maturation. Now we're really focusing in on the fine tuning of the blend uh, and getting just the balance of Cabernet and Petit Verdot just right. The vineyard is named after Jerry Lohr's late wife, Carol Lohr, and it's really in honor of her legacy. And every bottle of Carroll's Vineyard that we sell, we donate $3 to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Yeah, it's been a partnership that we've had with them for about seven years. It helps fund uh, mammograms for women that would not normally be able to get them. We'll bottle it usually around May 15th every year. And then it, at that point, it'll kind of rest in bottle for another year. And we only make about 2,000 six bottle cases of this. I hope you enjoy it. I'm Jerry Lohr, I'm the founder and uh, the founder of the vineyards and I'm the guy that uh, actually started everything. There's a question in some people's mind, is there really a Jay Lohr? There is a Jay Lohr. The Vineyard Series wines always get very special handling from us right from the very beginning. They're almost all hand harvested and now we have sorting systems that we can take out sunburned or slightly raisined or something to just keep the best berries. We make all the vineyard series in our punch down fermenters. And then of course we go into special barrels, typically uh, new barrels, high percentage, and normally um, European oak. So it's kind of special care all the way along. So I want to thank everybody who has participated for the last year. Our team has come out on a quarterly basis to kind of share with you some of the things they're doing at that particular time or as we are going through the, the year and uh, just hope that you will share some of our Vineyard Series wines with your friends, your family, uh, and especially those people that you think really like good wine.